thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So glad you are for me. Hallelujah. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus this morning. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God he is. If you are happy to be alive, I want you to get excited in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to talk to the neighbor. Say, neighbor, you may be wondering why I'm shouting. I'm so grateful to God that I am not in the cemetery, but I'm in the sanctuary. When I woke up this morning, I moved my hands and they responded. I moved my legs and they responded. I'm so glad that I'm alive. Somebody celebrate! Stop. It's so good to be back home. Hallelujah. There is no place like home. But I was happy I went. <laughs> we enjoyed ourselves. We were able to relax. And it's good for you people to miss me. <laughs> and miss us. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want you to go and just say happy Easter to five people. And listen. And when you tell them happy, I tell them you look better than the last time I saw you. than the last time I saw you. Hallelujah. Congratulations, husband and wife, latest couple in town. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you have your communion with you this morning? If you don't have the communion, you may please be seated. If you don't have the communion, please make sure you get one. Because as we go into this prophetic session, you need to begin to pray and prophesy over that communion because something supernatural is about to break loose in your life. Somebody is under the sound of my voice this morning. Everything you have been waiting for is about to be released today. Today is that day that you have been waiting for. Praise the name of Jesus. Once again, turn to as a neighbor. You look better than the last time I saw you. Praise God. So you guys get your communion. I don't know which door you guys came in through. <laughs> but ushers, let's make sure everybody have their communion ready. Everybody should have it because we're going to a prophetic session right now. I need to begin to pray and prophesy and begin to get ready for the download that heaven as a stuff for you. So let's just let's make that very fast. Just for me. Just for me. Just for me. Just for me. So ushers, I'm waiting for your signal.
I think they are ready for you now. So if you don't have it, please stand up so that they can identify you. Please stand up so that they can easily locate you. Ushers, let's make that very fast. Just for me. Just for me. chapter 8 and we just read one verse of scripture as we go into this prophetic communion service. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 11. Father, can I hear a very big amen? Yeah. But if the spirits of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege we have to see another resurrection morning. Lord, we thank you because death could not hold you captive. Even in the grave, you are Lord. Lord, we come this morning with great expectation in our heart. And I pray in the name that is above every name. That as we remember you on this communion table, there will be a revival of resurrection power. Lord, I pray for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. That by the power of this communion, dry bones will live again. That by the power of this communion, there will be resurrection power. Thank you, Lord, for testimonies that are about to flow uh, in the life of every individual. We give you the glory in advance uh, because no one is living here the same way they came. Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I can hear your amen. This morning, we are talking about reviving resurrection power by the communion reviving resurrection power by the communion the bible says if the spirit that raised jesus christ from the dead lives and abide in you that same spirit not a counterfeit one that same spirit will quicken your mortal body so listen people of god this morning all over the world we are celebrating the resurrection of jesus but i'm happy to announce to you that jesus did not raise himself from the dead jesus did not resurrect of his own accord there was a spirit that made it to happen it was the spirit of the lord that went into the dead body of jesus it was the spirit of the lord that invaded that tomb and brought jesus back to life so when jesus laid down his life he handed over to the holy spirit and said i have laid down my life but i leave it in your hand to wake me up listen and listen well i don't know if you have 
ever been in a situation where you went to sleep and you told your wife or your brother to wake you up at a particular time. The very minute you go to sleep, you have handed over your waking up into the hand of another. If that person forgets to wake you up, you are gone. Now, when Jesus was going, he laid down his life, but he said, I can't bring myself back. Holy Spirit, I'm handing over to you. Please wake me up. Now, listen and listen well. Many of you have a testimony of how that you told your spouse or you told someone to wake you up and they woke you up. Or some even forgot. Some of you even have an alarm system. And when you are going to sleep, you set your alarm for a particular time. And when that exact time comes, by the power of technology, the alarm will blow and then you will wake up. But let me ask you a question. Oh, now, when you go to the cemetery and you set an alarm in the cemetery, will dead bodies come back to life? So you need to understand that most of the time when you wake up by the alarm, it was not the alarm that woke you up. There was a power that was at work There was a power that was at work that made you to wake up. So when Jesus was dying, he laid down his life, but he did not hand over his resurrection to alarm clock. He didn't hand it over to anybody. He said, Holy Spirit, I want you to take over. So on the top day, somebody said, Third day. Somebody said, Third day. The Holy Spirit brought him back to life. Now the Bible is now telling us that the same Spirit that Oh, the same spirits that told death you are powerless. The same spirits that went to the grave and brought a dead man back to life. He said, that same spirit is living inside you. You are not getting it. He to you and say, you are too low dead to fail. Akai said, you are too low dead to fail. Tell us that you are more powerful than you realize. So the Bible says that same spirit is inside you. So if the same spirit that rose us on this inside you, he said that same spirit will do what? We quicken your mother body, sir. The word quicken means to bring back to life. It means resurrection. It means revival. In the name that is above every name. As you partake of the communion today, dry bones shall live again. I said, dry bones shall live again. I said, dry bones shall live again. I said, dry bones shall live again. Something I said, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm not living here the same way I came. Takarabo shandarabo kosada. So listen. The mystery there is that it's the same spirit. Hello? So question. If that spirit could enter the grave and bring Jesus back to life, what makes you think that that spirit cannot revive your business? What makes you think that that spirit cannot revive your marriage? What makes you think that that spirit cannot turn things around in your life. That's why we are here this morning. So that every dormancy of the spirits, every area where the spirit has been left unattended to, as you take the communion today, you know the Bible says when Elizabeth met with Mary, the baby in their room leaps. That's what the communion is about to do today. That as you take the communion, Something will wake up inside you. No, no, no. You see, you don't get it. You don't get it. See, whenever you see the story of Samson, the Bible will say, and when Samson saw the lion, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Now, listen. So, what I'm telling you is this: the spirit is in you. The resurrection power is not going to come. It's inside you. But we are here to wake it up. We are here to revive it. So as you take the communion today, what you have been accepting before, you will not accept it again. 
What you have been tolerating before, you will not tolerate it again. What you have been taking before, you will not take it again. Because by the power of resurrection that will wake up inside you, you will refuse to be refused. You will trouble your trouble. Hayagura Ravashaka. Shatalahande. Have you ever eaten food that runs your tummy? You finish eating. You thought you were eating. You finish eating, and a few minutes later, and before you know it, then you come out again. Then maybe your husband or your husband, are you okay? I just want to use myself. Then after that, then you go again. By the time you go the third time, they will say something is wrong. You see, you have one stomach. Oh, I'm going for a There may be doctors who call it diarrhea, whatever they want to go. But you see, what happens is that you ate something. And what you ate changed your biological metabolism and caused a reaction. And you started running to the toilet. Now, today you are about to eat something. And as you take the communion, every dry bed will rise again. Every dead potential will receive resurrection power. Everything that is not working will begin to work. Everything that has been delayed will begin to move. Everything that has been limited will no more be limited. You should really be shout resurrection power. to preach came to take communion so that we can revive it tell your neighbor say i'll go chop something say neighbor this morning i want to chop something <laughs> hey say neighbor there's lots of people they chop which cut yeah, I want to chop something. Oh. <laughs> Say neighbor. Hey, the thing I want chop. Hey, he get power. Oh. So when I chop and finish, and I begin to react, make you no one now. Listen and listen well. Let me help you briefly as we get ready to chop something. Hello? I thought say, I go chop something. Chop something. Hello? Listen. From the beginning of time, that same spirit has been at work. Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, and the Lord created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the day, and then their spirit moved. I don't know whether you are coming tomorrow, but listen to me, tomorrow will mark the difference between CEO and CEO. I'm telling you. So if you are a CEO here, and 5,000 has already disqualified you, Go and get a job. Hello? Because tomorrow, you see, there are some things that you should. Listen to me. Repeat to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. You cannot conquer what you have not confronted. And you cannot confront what you have not identified. Listen, the CEO summit tomorrow is going to be doing something drastic. You know, the very minute they put perfume or spray or cologne on your body, you can't control where the fragrance will get to. 
I told you about the law of the presence, just being there. You see, what is going to happen tomorrow is Genesis 1 3. Hello? When you enter that CEO summit tomorrow, Shalima Nekosia, there's going to be a fragrance of dominion that will rest upon you. Oh, Jesus. By the time you now step out, you will just suddenly realize that people will begin to see you in a different way. Because a fragrance has come upon your life. The Bible said the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of it. That means nothing was working. As a matter of fact, it's terrible. Terrible. But the spirit moved. And then God began to speak and there was a turnaround. In the name that is above every name. Everything that is formless. Everything that is void. Everything that darkness has taken over in your life. By the spirit today. By the communion today. Receive resurrection power. Receive resurrection power. By Genesis 17, Abraham was looking for a child. Old man. The wife said, don't pass menopause. But the Bible says the spirit of God came again. This same spirit, though, this same resurrection power. Listen and listen to me. When they say a woman has passed a childbearing age, they say she has entered what? Now repeat it, menopause. what? Now separate it, menopause. And what? Is it menopause? Stop. Men no pause. That means we press pause. But we can unpause it. In the name that is above every name. As you take the communion today, there will be an unpossing. I said there will be an unpossing. In the name of Jesus. Abraham at 100 years old. Still had enough erection. To perform in spam counts, no, no, you will be 34. Doctors are telling you nonsense, and you know, you have no spam counts. We have to boost your spam count. I'm happy to announce to you greater than a Chinese medicine, greater than a medical prescription is what you have in your hand. Is the blood of Jesus, it can boost your spam count. He can bring the erection where there is no erection. In the name that is above every name, as you take the communion today, you are coming alive. I say you are coming alive. So you know I have a erectile dysfunction. I am the resurrection. Resurrection and the life is resurrection. And the life. Tell your neighbor, say, enough is enough. You know, uh, you know, then the pause. Who, 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 who talk? Hello? So, in the name that is above every name, you will not live here the same way you came. So, what you have in your hand, is the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And as you partake of the communion today, whatever cannot handle the blood cannot handle you. Whatever cannot handle the flesh cannot handle you. In the name of Jesus, everything that has not been moving will begin to move. Somebody's career is about to be accelerated. Somebody's business is about to break forth. Somebody's ministry is about to explode. Somebody shout, I'm going from local to global. In the name of Jesus. In Numbers chapter 17, everybody brought their rod when there was a contention about who was approved by God. And God said, tell everybody to bring their rod that represents them in my presence and let them bring it to the altar. The Bible says the cloud of God came down the next morning when they woke up and got to the temple. They saw that out of all the rod that was put on the temple, the rod of Aaron, 
bordered. Now that means a dry stick that is not connected to the soil without any roots began to blossom because of resurrection power. I don't know whether whether your business is Babi Salu. Even if you are selling fruits by the roadside or you are a research car seller, in the name that is above every name, you will be some. Ah, I say you will be some. I say you will be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. Out of dryness came forth life. In Luke chapter 1, we see the story of Elizabeth and Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. <laughs> the Bible says she that was called barren. By the time the Spirit of the Lord appeared to Mary, he said, Mary, something is coming over you today. You are going to give birth to Jesus. How can this thing be? I know no man. said, no. He said, the power of the most I will make it up with resurrection power. He said, it will come upon you and you will give birth. He said, but to prove to you that I'm not lying, your cousin Elizabeth, she that was called barren, is already six months pregnant. The power has hit the cousin. I'm going somewhere. But now it's hitting Mary. I've said it over and over again. Every time God blesses your neighbor, it means God is in your neighborhood. So every day you come to church and somebody is giving testimony, rejoice. Because it means that he's around the corner. Even if he's doing it row by row, he goes through reach your turn. So he said, look, I am not here. Your cousin don't get him. Your cousin has already explained it six months ago. So if you doubt it, it's to your destruction. So listen. Whether you believe in resurrection power or not, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus experienced it. Thousands of people have experienced it. If you refuse to experience it, it's not because it does not exist. It's because you are not ready. But today, you are ready. Yeah. I can't just say you are ready. Yeah. If you are not shut I'm ready. Yeah. When well, you look at the ministry of Jesus, three different times, the Bible records that Jesus rose people from the dead three times. Now listen, the Bible reveals to us that there are many things that Jesus did that were not recorded. If it was to be recorded, the books would not be enough. So it's possible that he rose more than three people from the dead, but the Bible only recorded three. But listen to this. The first person that Jesus brought back from the dead was the book of Mark chapter 5, and that is Jairus' daughter. Then in Luke chapter 7, the son of the widow of Nain. They were going for burial when Jesus met them. And then the third one was in John chapter 11, and that was Lazarus. Now listen. According to the Jewish tradition, it is believed that when somebody dies, they can still wake up within three to four days. They can wake up again. So it is when they wake, day one, it didn't wake. Day two, it didn't wake. Day three, they say, ah! It don't go. So by the fourth day, they now begin to wake. They begin to wake. Now, so you now have what they call the seven days of mourning. First three days of crying, four days of wailing. Making seven days of mourning. So when Jesus was called to come and pray for Jairus' daughter, Jesus went there. There was a woman with the issue of blood, 12 years. Hello? Then there was Jairus' daughter, 12 years old. Hello? Are you ready? Then Jesus with his 12 disciples. So as Jesus was going, when they came to tell Jesus, the girl was not dead. They said, my daughter is sick. Come and pray for my daughter. So while they were going to pray for a sick 12-year-old girl, a 12-year-old problem stopped Jesus on the road. He said, God, before they born that girl, now I don't do trouble. Said to me first. So the woman with the issue of blood stopped the journey. And by the time Jesus finished with the woman, as he was about to go to the girl, they came and said, sorry, 
She is no more sick. She is now dead. So listen and listen well. That you have handed over your case to God does not mean it cannot get worse. Because see, the problem with many people is that hey, I prayed and things became worse. No, Jairus prayed. No, Jairus, he went beyond prayer. He met Jesus. Kore, kore. And then over the case to Jesus. The picking will never die when the conscious. After a conscious, the picking can die. So your case can be lost after you hand it over to God. But it's a setup. <laughs> it's a setup. Because raising somebody from the dead is a greater testimony than healing the sick. So don't be angry with the woman that stopped the procession. Jairus was angry. Which kind of useless woman be this one now? Spoiled market, bad markets. But Jesus said, don't worry. It's taken care of. And by the time they got there, Jesus raised the girl from the dead. But you see, the problem is, people didn't believe. They didn't lie. The girl does this. You know, see, even you talk and say she's sleeping. You didn't lie. The one day Jesus was going. Then the woman was coming. They were waiting. The baby was in the coffin. The son. We do have known. He looked seven. Then darkness was coming. Light was coming. And when power jam power, lesser power must bow. So, Jesus said, no, this cannot happen. Put the coffin down. And put his hand on the coffin. And the boy came back to life. I said, no lie. No, you know, now yesterday he died. Never reached three days. So by the time they will send message to Jesus that Lazarus is sick, Jesus said, Oppo. Oppo. He said, Dead them. This sickness is not unto death. But he refused to show up. Day one, day two, day three. He waited. So that all the critics and the mockers would have come to the point they know that this one is must be God. Then the Bible says, on the fourth day, Jesus showed up, and then the Lazarus that they had buried put a body wrapped him in grave clothes, put him inside the coffin, inside the grave, cover it, cover everything. Jesus came, and this same power that you are about to experience. Went to walk in, and Lazarus came back to life. Listen, that was not the only Lazarus in the Bible. You know, there's another Lazarus and the rich man. There are many Lazaruses, but when Jesus said Lazarus comforts, the Lazarus that the miracle belongs to. <laughs> But it's a Lazarus. So there is a DNA on every word. And you didn't get that. So that's why I know that every service is not for everybody. Because every time I declare, there are some people that that word has their DNA on it. So when the word hits them, their amen will be different, their faith will be shared, their ex every single day. But some people, when you say, you are blessed, Amen. No DNA. It's not for them. They never see trouble. So today, as you take the communion, everything that the enemy has killed in your life is coming back to life. As you take the communion, everything that the enemy has stolen in your life, there is restoration. As you take the communion, every activity of hell against your destiny is terminated. So Lazarus came back to life. Listen and listen well. Somebody is under the sound of my voice. You used to be very prayerful. When you pray like this, you enjoy it. You have joy in prayer. But somewhere along the line, you lost it. And you have been crying, God, bring me back. Take me back to that place. Where studying your word was a delight. 
Take me back to that place where reading your word was a delight. Take me back to that place of worship or prayer. Today, as we take the communion and see a revival in your life. I said there is a revival in your life. There are some of you here. Before now, when they say service is eight, you are there by seven. When they say we are doing seven days fasting, you will add seven days to it. When you hear let's go to church, you will begin to rejoice. I was glad when they said that to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now, every announcement of a program is a body in your heart. Now, when they say service is mommy session, everybody says say again, because you have lost touch with heaven. You have lost touch with what matters. You go to work Monday to Friday, Monday to night, three hours in traffic to go, three hours in traffic to come. You never complain, no, because they are paying you 70000 that cannot take care of your destiny. But when God now says, come to church and serve me, you have an excuse. There's something wrong with your destiny. Because the Bible says, when they say the burden of the Lord, the burden of the Lord, the cause has come upon your life. But today, in the name that is above every, as you take this communion, every spirit of heaviness, every spirit of weariness, everything that wants to ruin you, your life is paralyzed in the name of Jesus. There are some of you here today who are confused about life. You don't even know what to do. You don't have direction. You are clueless about the next phase of your life. But I'm happy to announce to you, as you take the communion today, there will be divine illumination. There will be divine direction. There will be divine clarity. Confusion will expire. In the name of Jesus. If you will shout, Amen. Rise up on your feet and shout resurrection power three times. Right now, we are ready to receive the communion and as I declare over your life, listen, I want everyone under the sound of my voice, if you have made a commitment towards Rehoboth and you have paid the money or you have paid part of it, I want you to come with your communion and come and make a contact with this altar because there is a unique blessing coming upon Because you answered God early, God said I should tell you that because you answered me early, I will answer you early. If you have made a commitment to robot and you have paid, or you have just made a deposit, come bring your communion to the altar and come and make a connection with heaven. Everywhere is the altar plus choir. Everywhere is altar. So don't know. Everywhere, anything you touch is altar. So make a connection with this altar. Everybody gets your communion ready. If you have not paid your robot wrong this month, by the time you resume on Tuesday, you'll be surprised at what will be waiting for you. The remaining part of this month will be filled with some dangerous testimonies. Dangerous testimonies. Dangerous testimonies. Everybody get your communion ready. Get it ready. Get it ready. Shalaboka Sande. Ruki Pretushke Pradahanda. Thank you, Jesus. Get it ready. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, thank you for your resurrection power. Today, as we take the communion to revive this power within us, I pray over everyone under the sound of my voice that as they receive the communion today, let there be a revival. As they receive the communion today, let there be resurrection power. Lord, everything they desire in righteousness, Every expectation of their heart in accordance with your will. Let it be that today is the day you made it happen. Let them remember today for good. In the name of Jesus. Lord, the Bible says, and Abraham woke up early the next day to obey you. Your children have made a commitment and they have woken up early to obey you. Lord, I pray, as they make connection to this altar, answer them early. Every battle that the enemy has introduced into their life to frustrate them, every battle that the enemy has introduced into their destiny to discourage them, I turn the battle back to sender. In the name of Jesus, everything you 
you are struggling with today, you receive your victory. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as we take this communion, let your resurrection power invade every destiny. Let there be spiritual resurrection. Let there be financial resurrection. Let there be marital resurrection. Let there be career resurrection. Let there be academic resurrection. Let there be ministry resurrection. Let there be health resurrection. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Open your mouth, take the communion, and begin to prophesy. Take it, go back to your seat, just make a connection with the other. Now begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. Open your mouth, begin to prophesy. Shalaboko Sandeleha. Open your mouth, begin to prophesy. Open your mouth, bless yourself. Open your mouth, bless yourself. Begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. Bless yourself. Bless yourself. Your marriage is blessed. Your health is blessed. Your career is blessed. Your business is blessed. Bless yourself. Your wife is blessed, your children are blessed. You will not bury your children. The power of the grave is broken over your destiny. Bless yourself. Bless your household. Bless your family. Bless your future. Prophesy over your wife, over your children. Prophesy over your business. Open your mouth and place an order for miracles from above. Then the remaining part of this month. You will not weep, you will not mourn. Prophesy, prophesy. Bless yourself. Bless your business. Bless your womb. Bless your checkbook. Bless your car. Bless your ministry. Every expectation in the remaining part of this year. Pray. The baby in your womb is blessed. The baby in your hand is blessed. Bless your marriage. Bless your career. Bless your business. There's a resolution power in your tongue. There's a resolution power in your mouth. Reject anything that you don't want. Reject sickness. Reject failure. Reject poverty. Reject delay. Reject disappointment. Reject death. Reject sorrow. You will not be kidnapped. Your children will not be kidnapped. You will not be bombed. Reject it. Anything that is contrary to the covenant, reject it. Jesus mighty name we pray it is done it is done it is done in the name of Jesus if you believe it rejoice in the Lord
Hallelujah. Listen to me. I want you to do something for me right now because I want to pray for some people now. If you are under the sound of my voice, don't close your eyes. Just open your eyes. Today is a special day. If you are here today, you are not born again. If Jesus comes now, you are not sure of heaven. Even that communion you just drank can, can cause more trouble for you. But when you come to Jesus, you are secured in him. But when you are not with Jesus and you are fighting devil, you complicate your case. But I want to pray for you and actually shake hands with you today and bless you. Say, Pastor, I want to surrender to Jesus. I want to serve him. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of doing things on my own. I need Jesus. I want you to come out and meet me here. Then those of you that are not supposed to be out, I want you to turn to your neighbor and find out. Say, are you really born again? If they are not born again, come out with them. Bring them to the altar by yourself. I'm waiting for you now. Talk to them. Do evangelism now. now. I didn't say you should sit down. Everybody should be standing. Talk to your neighbor and find out. Anybody that is not born again, come to the altar. I want to pray for you. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Come to the altar. I'm waiting. Come to the altar. I'm waiting. Come. Thank you. Come. Come. I'm waiting. Yes, I'm waiting. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. I'm waiting. Come to the altar. Yes, keep coming. Celebrate them as they come. Come. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Anyone that is next to you that is not born again, bring them, bring them. Come with them, bring them. Yes, come, come, come. You lost me, you cannot say what. Come, come, come. come. four more people that need to be here four more people we're gonna give you just one more minute 60 seconds there are four of you that still need to be here we are waiting we are waiting we are waiting we are waiting four people that needs to be here don't miss this opportunity don't miss this opportunity don't let the enemy rob you of this blessing we are waiting we are waiting we are waiting we are waiting. Four more people need to be here. Three more. Three more people need to be here. We are waiting. Thirty six seconds more. Thirty six seconds more. Everyone is waiting for you. Everyone is waiting for you. Yeah. Two more. Yes. One more person. Everyone is waiting for you. One more person. That's it. Hallelujah. He loves me. He loves me. I cannot say why. Hallelujah. He loves me. I cannot say why. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these wonderful people. On this resurrection morning, they came to surrender to you. Lord, as I make a connection with them by shaking hands with them, let resurrection power invade their destiny. And let today be the beginning of the rest of their lives. That upon the confession of their mouth, they will be justified. In the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet, shake hands with me. The Lord bless you. Let's go that way. Go that way. Mama, you are blessed. Mama, you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Just celebrate. You are blessed. Go this way. This way. This way.
God bless. Just celebrate. 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 Hallelujah. Now I want you to go to five people and say you look better than when we started the service. Hallelujah, you may please be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you were not in church when we took the offering earlier on, and you have your tithes, your offering, your oil boats, or whatever commitments with you, can you rise up so that we can pray over your offerings? If you are not here when we took the offerings, can you please rise up? Thank you. Ushers, identify them. Just lift up your offerings, your tithes, and whatever seed you came.